up, everybody? What up? We back in the building. Welcome to another episode of Debate with Bake, brought to you by Most Serious Entertainment in the heart of Most City, Texas. I'm your host, Mr. Charles Baker, a.k.a. C. Bake. That's my co-host, Gerard Cole, a.k.a. Cole, a.k.a. Rude Boy. Before we get started, make sure you follow Most Serious Entertainment on Instagram and Facebook. Sub subscribe to Most Serious Entertainment on YouTube. Rude boy, what's up, man? We back in the building again. You see it, you see it, man. Amped up today, you know. Football season about to be getting around. My hometown Buffalo Bills about to do what they do, you know. That's right, man. That's right. You know they, based on what they did last year, man, they were one possession away. But let's get into it, man. Let's get into the NFL 2022 slash 2023 season. Um. It's a big season, you know. It was a it was an exciting season in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm always looking forward to NFL football. Um, like you said, one of your teams, like Buffalo, you got Kansas City with these young quarterbacks. You got Tom Brady coming back again for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, you got big trades that took place in the off season. Um, Tyreek Hill to the Miami Dolphins. You got Russell Wilson headed to the Denver Broncos. So it's an exciting season season ahead, man. Um, but let's get into it. Let's talk about the different divisions in the NFL. And then let's go ahead and give us give our predictions, man, as to who we think gonna take this thing all the way from both the AFC and NFC conference. Let's talk about the AFC East first. Let's go where you at, your hometown. The Jets, and of course, your home hometown, Buffalo Bills. Um, last season, of course, the Buffalo Bills won a division. Mm -hmm. They finished with 11 and 6 um, to take the AFC East. And the second place was the New England Patriots at the record of 10 and 7, which they did make the playoffs. I think they were bounced out in the first round. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Dolphins, who had some success. They went on a seven game winning streak, but also. Um, didn't win enough to get into the playoffs, but they made some 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 press, some cover. And then, of course, at the bottom, which has always been a bottom of a barrel team <laughs> within the last five years, is your very own New York Jets, um, who is your hometown fiend, team. Um, so let's talk about the AFC East, man. Um, let's talk about, you know, what do we think in terms of uh, what each team will do um, and then let's talk about who we think. Well, I think we both know who's going to win or who we're going to predict who's going to win that division. But let's talk about the Bills, brother. Let's talk about the Bills. What are you excited about with the Bills, man? Man, the Bills, I'm excited about everything. I, I, they're bringing the same team back with a couple of additions like Von Miller. Von mm -hmm. Miller was, you know, he won he won the championship last year with the Rams. That's right. And he's one of the best defensive ends in the league. And he's been, been in the league, well, I want to say 13, 14 years now. Yeah. And he still got it. And I just think that was a big acquisition. Then they're getting Tredavious White back, who was injured last year. And they lost him. And he was considered possibly the best or second best corner in the entire league. Um. And then they got to me, to be honest with you, I'm the biggest Lamar Jackson and, and Mahomes fans, and, and especially my man from Cincinnati. That's my new up and coming, my, probably my favorite player. However, I'm starting to believe that Josh Allen is the best quarterback in the NFL. Well, I tell you what, man, I can't even, I can't even dispute that. I mean, judging on what I've seen from him last year, not only in the regular season, but in the playoffs. And we both know that they were pretty much one possession away. They got into a shootout with mm -hmm. the Kansas City Chiefs. And that says a lot to me because we all know that Kansas City is, is what I consider an offensive juggernaut. I mean, they can score at any time. All the weapons that they had, of course, they had Tyreek Hill, who is now with the Miami Dolphins, yes. the Cheetah. Um, they had the tight end, uh, Travis Kelsey. Was mm -hmm. a tight end. And you know, you got the the genius of Andy Reid, and you also got Eric B enemy behind that offense. Um, and so for Buffalo to go back to back, and I think Buffalo, I think for the whole second half in the playoffs, that game, that was a divisional game, I believe. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, it was just Kansas City score, then Buffalo score. Kansas City score and Buffalo score. And what I liked about Buffalo is that there's not that many teams in the National Football League who can respond to the, the offensive, Kansas City, the offensive efficiency of Kansas City, um, the explosiveness of that offense. So I didn't even know Buffalo had that. I know Buffalo was good. I knew Josh Allen was good. But what I saw from Josh Allen and the way he moved that offense, I mean, it really, really added another element. I didn't know that they could score at will like that. I mean, to go one on one with Buffalo offense, I mean, with Kansas City, excuse me, with that kind of explosiveness and to respond. Usually, what Kansas City teams have to do is try to slow down the offense and try to slow down the clock because they can't hang with that offensive juggernaut that they have. But to mm-hmm. me, to see a team in the playoffs um, in a win and go home situation, win or go home situation, and to be able to go back and forth with them offensively showed me something about Buffalo that I didn't know that they had. I knew they were a good team, I knew that they could score. But I didn't know that they could go back to back with Mahomes and the Chiefs. I, I think what changed Buffalo was when they got Diggs. I think Diggs just added a different dimension. You already have a running quarterback, and the play calling within that offense is is amazing. Even Beasley that came from Dallas, you know, right. having him in the slot, he just makes big plays all the time. And now this year they added Jamison Crowder from the Jets. That's right. And That's right. and then then Knox has been playing good. He stepped his game up and I and I and I could have swore they drafted someone else. It's just not hitting me right now. But they have a deep team and they tight ends are pretty pretty solid too. So uh I definitely have them winning that division. And then after that, I I I want to say Miami's neck just underneath them a little bit. I think Miami's going to surprise people cuz people don't understand like you were talking about early uh Tyreek Hill. There's nobody like him in the NFL. Yeah. That stop and go, that speed on the deep balls. Right. I personally think, I personally think that these they're gonna win, Carmen that they're gonna out. win double digit, they're gonna win double digit games. Right. Double digit games. And their defense is not a joke either. They got one of the best corners in the league with Xavier Howard. That's right. That's right. And just to add to that, that was the highlight of their season last year, was their defense. Last year in 2021, they finished nine and eight. Um, they what was impressive about them last year is they had a seven game winning streak by mm-hmm. which the defense was just lights out. I mean, they stopped people. Um, statistically, they became one of the top defenses around that time when they had that seven game uh winning streak, and pretty much everybody they're bringing everybody back on their defense, and so. The thing about Miami, I agree with you. I think they can be, what is it, 18 games this year? I think they can get, I think they can be a double digit win team. I think it's going to start with their defense first, even with the addition mm-hmm. of Tyrone Hill. And they got some more key additions that could help. I think they picked up Teddy Bridgewater as a backup quarterback. Yeah. I love that addition as a backup quarterback because I always felt like Teddy Bridgewater. Even when he played, I think he had a small stop in Denver and somewhere else, too. I never thought Teddy Bridgewater – I think he had a small stint with New Orleans, too. Um, I never thought Teddy Bridgewater played bad football. I just always thought he was hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people might call me crazy, but I think he still could be a starter in this game. Um, I probably not. Yeah, I I, I think he could. I think you look at the teams like the Jets. He could definitely start on the Jets. And the Texans, too, if we want to put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, that's, that's two right but there. But I think with him, a guy that can still, to me, be a number one in this league, depending on the mm-hmm. team and the situation, I think that's a great advantage for a backup quarterback. You know, yep. for a backup quarterback, what I think about backup quarterbacks in the NFL, and this is why Teddy Bridgewater sticks out to me, a backup quarterback within six games, let's say a quarterback, a first-string quarterback gets hurt. I think for a, a credible backup in the NFL, you should at least go 500, three and three. I agree. I'm I not agree saying that. that you should you should step in and be, you know, oh, where is this guy? How come he didn't start? That type of player. But I think you should be able to at least be 500 and keep the team afloat. With Teddy Bridgewater, I think Teddy Bridgewater, and I think he did that with New Orleans. I think I think when mm-hmm. the trees went out, he did something where they went five and zero or something like that. 
I think yep. Teddy Bridgewater does that. Um, and I think that's an excellent backup. And let me say this about Miami. Even though back to Tyreek Hill, we all know that he's a game changer. We mm-hmm. all know that he can blow the top off of a defense. And Kansas City showed us when he was in Kansas City that he can be a weapon, whether it's running routes, whether it's running a a, a fly pattern. We know that mm-hmm. speed is his biggest thing. They also use them in screens and bubble screens. They also use them in some running plays, special packages. I mean, you know, Kansas City is very creative. And so they were able to get a lot. We got a chance to see everything that Tyreek Hill could do. Mm-hmm. Not to mention that they did have one of the best quarterbacks in the game. Uh, but let me say this about Tyreek Hill. Um, he is definitely, I think he changes the face of that offense for Miami because you have a down the field, a downfield threat. And you can if you can be creative like Kansas City, I don't know if you can because you don't have Mahomes. Um, he can definitely, he's gonna definitely demand a double team. However, They've also put some other weapons around Tua. And I think, Gerard, it comes down to, I still think, even with the addition of Tyreek Hill, even Teddy Bridgewater, um, they've added some more guys that are like running backs, wide receivers, nothing, no big names, but they've added some other guys that are quality players. I still Mm -hmm. think that they're a defense first team because, again, They bring back everybody, and when they were in the midst of that seven-game winning streak last year, it was the defense that was the forerunner. Now, what Tua did within that seven-game win streak is he managed the game, and he didn't turn the ball. Mm -hmm. I think they added Tyreek Hill. I think they added another big-name guy. I can't think of his name now. They got got Waddle from last year. He was one of the best rookies. Right, he's Mm -hmm. one of the best rookies. That's who I'm thinking about, Waddle. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, it says two things. For one, they're going to see what Tua has. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is we've surrounded you with a lot of weapons. We got you the most dangerous receiver, most dangerous down the field threat. You got Waddle coming back. You got solid running backs that are coming back. The offensive line was wow. good. I think they're bringing everybody back from the offensive line. I'm not 100% correct on that, but it seems like that. Mm-hmm. I think this is a make a break year for David Tool. Because if you can't get it done with that offensive line and that defense, and now you got one of the most dangerous weapons in the league, I think Miami is trying to see what they got with him. Despite all of that, all the the upgrades on offense, it's still a defense first squad to me. Um, I do agree that they should win double digit games, like you said. Um, I think they get a wild card at best. Um, but other than that, I have to see what David Tua is going to be. Mm. I, I like to I like to hear that later on too. That wild card. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. But well, I'm uh, saying could... I'm saying at their best, maybe a wild card. Okay, at their okay. best, that means okay. if everything plays out the way it should. At best, they'll be a wild card team. I, now, I think I don't think I, that they're going to be a wild card team, okay. but I'm saying if they overachieve, if they go past my expectations, and we'll talk about this later with okay. our predictions. Let me and maybe I didn't say that correctly. Yes, if they exceed my expectations, mm-hmm. maybe your expectations. I'm sounds like it. Wild card team at the best. I still don't see them. If they exceed my expectations, I still don't see them winning the AFC East. And I see them like tiptoeing into the playoffs, if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. I can yeah. see, I can see, I can see your perspective. Right. Yeah. Um, of course, the last two teams we've got, uh, we got the Patriots and the Jets. Go ahead. So I would say the Jets is going to finish third. Um, I got the Jets finishing third because I think they added enough talent on the defensive side of the ball and on the offensive side of the ball. I, I think by far, if we had a quarterback, I think we could probably have the best receiving core in, in football if we had a quarterback, because I don't believe in Zach. Um, I think that he has talent, but he's never played against anybody in college. I was one of the people telling a lot of people that I knew they should have drafted Phils. Phils would have been perfect for this team. Um, I think he's mobile. I think he doesn't crack under pressure. I just see Zach doing 
Aaron Darnold type stuff, like throwing interceptions when there's no need to throw an interception. It's, it's just – that's I just think they finished third because I don't think New England's that good this year. So let me ask you this. Good point. So you got them finishing third. So last year they finished four and thirteen. So you mm-hmm. think that they do improve from that last year, that record last year, because last year they finished four and thirteen, and they finished at the bottom of the division. And I mean, I say that I say I they mean, win the six, East, rather. I say they win six games. So six games, games beca- because the talent increase is going to cause at least two more wins. I think um, we lose a lot of games because our quarterback play. The only way that I see us maybe winning more is it depends on how Flacco does with these first four games that he's going to have an opportunity to start. Um, or if Zach can prove me wrong. I personally don't see a star in Zach. I don't. So now he's, I, got a, he's got a big arm. And how he long has a, he been in the NFL now? Is this is the second, the second year, but he was injured most of the year last year. So, so, you, so you really think it's time to like move on from him? You, you've seen something within one year coming into his second year that says he's not the guy. He you reminds me of Darno. He reminds me of Darno. I felt like we had this player before. After one year? I feel like we had this player before. I, I, I'll still go back and say this and put this on record that I think the biggest mistake that they made was letting Teddy Bridgewater go because they didn't want to create a uh, uh, quarterback controversy with Darno. Right, right. And I think that was the dumbest thing ever because we had a quarterback. Someone who will manage the game and someone who, to me, is better than those Kirk Cousins and a couple of those other players, you know? So, yeah, I could agree with you on that on Teddy Bridgewater, but I mean, Zach has got such a big arm, Gerard. I mean, it's one year. I mean, really, after one year, after one year, you can can. You know, you know who yeah. else had a big arm? Ryan Lee, dog. Oh. <laughs> and that's how I feel right now. I feel like he's a Ryan Leaf, man. I'll tell you, Even Ryan Leaf. Of that. Ryan Leaf. Oh, <laughs> boy. Man. But after one year, you ready to get rid of him? I'm ready. I'm ready to get rid of him. I, I, I'll watch him because I think he does have talent. I just don't think he has, the, like, the the IQ or the – or the to, to to play at this level. Like, I think he thinks, like, like Darno, like, I've seen him throw interceptions that were, like, how did you throw that? And like, how did you not see that? But you don't think that's rookie mistakes. You don't think that's coaching. You don't think that that can get better over time. You don't think, think it's worth even giving him another year to kind of be like, let's see what's going on. If we make some um, modifications, because again, you can say that about him, but at the end of the day, the jets as an organization, the coaching has been suspect. Everything has been suspect because the thing since, is, since Rex Ryan, since Rex Ryan, because yeah, I felt the, like right, and so and, Rex and, Ryan up, right. And I agree with you on that, but I'm talking about the here and now. I mean, the coaching has been subpar. I mean, yeah, you don't I, think I with the talent that Zach Wilson has, um, you don't think with better coaching he gets better. You don't I think. think I think me personally, if the Jets lose the season, I think who they should get should be my man that was at uh, Sean Payton that was in New Orleans. I think he'd be perfect for perfect. Zach because if you saw what he did for Winston, and not just that, he's a creative off- offensive mind. When you have Wilson from Ohio State on our squad, Corey Davis, Mims, uh, Elijah Moore, and Barrios, like, you can do stuff with that lineup. And then you got three tight ends who are good. You got Conklin that just came from Minnesota. You got Zuma, who was Uzuma, who was the uh just played came from Cincinnati, played, he would have played in the Super Bowl if he didn't get injured. And then you have this rookie, Rutger, and then you have two running backs that are pretty good. You have Brees Hall to me. You might think I'm crazy, but that might be your offensive rookie of the year. And on top of that, you might. You might say he's a top ten running back after this Ooh, season. Wow! After this season, that what boy is that good. What that a boy is that good? That boy wow. is that good. Wow! He he gives wow. me uh Ladamian Tomlinson vibes, man. Ooh. I said it here first, man. Ladamian wow. Tomlinson vibes. Man. Well, you heard, it. hey, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Ladamian Tomlinson vibes, man. Wow! On on the on wow. Woo. He's a LT? winner. He makes yeah, LT man. All the fame, just, LT. He's just smooth out there, man. He's just smooth, man. 
All right, so Tell you it. said so you said you got the Jets at number three and you got the Patriots at number four. Number four. I have Patriots at four. I I, th- I always love homeboy from uh uh Alabama, the quarterback. Jones. I think he Jones, I Matt Jones. Um it's Matt Jones, right? Yeah, it is Matt Jones. Mm-hmm. I just think he's he's solid. He ain't gonna lose you no game. He ain't gonna lose you no game, and he could make a big play here and there. Um, I think New England's problem is they don't have no real talent. And they also lost their offensive coordinator. So I, I, I don't know what it's going to look like for them. I don't know what style of play because McDaniels always had this dink and dunk, dink and dunk. And a couple of his plays, like three or four different running backs to give you different flows of the game. I don't know what the style is now. You know? Um, I can see I think, that. I, can I see think that. Re- receiver, when I look at the receiver room, I'm like, I'm not scared of nobody over there. You know? And then they gave away their best corner because I don't know what this dude be doing, but I never doubt Belichick, though. Because he's the type of person that he'll, he'll he gets uh water out of a rock, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like who does and that's that? That's why that's why I'm gonna disagree with you <laughs> with them being last. Uh, my order is, of course, mm-hmm. I agree with you as Bills being the number one. Um, I got, I mean, I'm 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 tossed up in between the Patriots and the Dolphins. I got Jets being the last team. I just don't think that. I think what's wrong with you guys in New York is coaching. And I could be wrong about that um, because y'all have talent. I mean, y'all not like us in Houston. We don't really have any players, but that's for another discussion. Y'all got talent. I'm just, when when you've been as bad as you guys have been for as long as you've been, that's on the organization to me. I think it's coaching. Um, I think it's the front office. So I'm going to say coaching and that's why I got you guys number four. Now, when I talk about the Patriots, and I'm leaning towards putting them number two simply because I don't know what Miami is other than what we just talked about, what they have on paper, what they should be. Um, I know I said them having 10 wins, but now that I think about it, I mean, having multiple-digit wins, I don't know what I, with, with Miami. I'm not – because, again, it comes back down to Tua for me. Um, mm-hmm. Again, like I said, if if they overachieve to me, yes. But right now, simply because of and I like Matt Jones, I agree with you. I think he's solid. In fact, he he made me a believer last year, and I know it's only one year, and I know it's an Alabama quarterback. You know, everybody says, and it's been true that Alabama quarterbacks don't do that well. Alabama is really mm-hmm. known for running backs, mm-hmm. um, and defensive guys, but. You made the comment earlier about you don't know what they have, and that's true. But one thing that that we should not forget about Bill Belichick, and you alluded to it just a little bit too, I could never go against him as a coach. Even last year, I didn't think that talent-wise they weren't that good either. But last year they finished 10-7 and and they got into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So what I'm counting on and what I've always seen from Belichick is that, yes, he always finds a way to sort of either get a lot out of a little or to introduce us to somebody who wasn't or who we thought wasn't a superstar. He plays, they play in that system or that style of play and that they end up being good players or superstars. So I can't put them last. Um, be simply because of Bill Belichick and how they coach in that organization. Mm. Yes, they lost Josh McDaniels. I think he's the head coach now in Las Vegas, right? He went back to yeah. the offensive coordinator. Um, I don't think that's a big loss. I like Josh McDaniels, but I don't think – excuse me, I think a lot of things that Josh did was endorsed by Bill Belichick, meaning that Belichick kind of set him – uh into motion as far as how he does things. Um, I don't think that's a great loss to the organization, and I could be wrong about that. But with Bill Belichick and them having a solid quarterback, and again, you are right as far as the talent. I don't know a lot of those guys as I'm looking through all this paperwork. I'm like, I don't even know who these guys are. Mm -hmm. But every time I go against Bill Belichick, and even last year, I said, man, these guys are not going to make it with a young quarterback. They're not going to even compete. 
and they make the playoffs. Um, coming out of training camp, knowing Bill Bill Belichick and Matt Jones, you know, I think they have a chance to still go back to the playoffs. Now it's going to be slim to none because of the lack of talent, but if there's anything there, Bill Belichick is going to get something out of it. So I say, and I'm going out on a limb on this for the AFC East. If I'm a betting man, and I don't bet, but if I had to, I'm going to slide the Patriots back into that number two spot simply because mm. of coaching, because of reputation, because of the type of program they have. And I'm starting to believe in Matt Jones. Even though I don't believe in Alabama quarterbacks, he showed me a lot last year. Now, I will say this. Let me back up on Jones. I believe in him, but this year is going to be the year because the first year they don't have any film on you or they have college film. Mm -hmm. This year they got film on you. So we're really going to see what he is. I believe he. I believe he's what he was last year. In fact, he may even get better, and I think you know he's in a good system with Belichick. But we're going to find out really what he is because now this is the year. Year two for rookie quarterbacks or for young quarterbacks to me is to tell, to see if you're legit because now they got film on you. Now they got a chance to study you. Let's mm -hmm. see what happens. So with that being said, I'm with you. I got the Bills winning the division. I got the Jets at the bottom. Um, I got Miami at best getting that wild card spot, meaning overachieve. I'm kind of the same way with the Patriots. I'm leaning a little bit more with the Patriots because of the organization to maybe, maybe at their best to get a wild card spot. But I'm with you. I got the Bills as winning that division. Um, okay. Okay. I can't be mad at the Miami or the New England. Yeah, well, Miami uh, and New England. I feel like you know, they can flip-flop. Right. And, and again. Other right, one got more of, talent. Right. Yeah. And Miami, because I, the talent is there. I don't know what Tua is. You know what I'm saying? In fact, he's another Alabama quarterback, right? David mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what he is. And I think that's what Miami's doing. I think they're loading up to see what he is. You know, he showed flashes last year with, in that winning streak, but I think they're trying mm -hmm. to find out who he is. My comparison of them would be like the Timberwolves of football would be the would be the Miami Heat. And then you would have like the Pelicans would be like New England. You know, they made the playoffs. They they there. But, uh. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, my New England, the coaching, the organization, yeah. you know, that's what I'm going with. I, I, I'm i with you 100%. Talent-wise, I don't know. But, again, we've seen seasons where they haven't had nothing or we thought they didn't have nothing. They end up yeah. in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go against Belichick on that, but I'm with you. I think we both agree that the Bills are going to win that division. Let's go to the AFC North, and then we're going to move. We're going to move quickly through these AFC North, which is the Bengals, who won a division last year at ten and seven, ended up going to the Super Bowl. You got the Steelers, who went to the playoffs, which was remarkable because I didn't think they were going to make it. You got the Browns, who didn't make it. At eight and nine, Steelers were nine and seven, and then you got the Ravens that finished eight and nine. All right, tell me, <sighs> give me your order. This is a tough division to grade. Mm. There's been a lot of things going on in the offseason. I don't know if we have a lot of time to talk about it, but give me your one, two, and three, and four in this division. This is a very competitive division. Um, obviously, the media coverage with the Browns and Deshaun Watson we've talked about that a lot which they don't get him till I think game 11 or 12 when he comes to Houston isn't that something mm -hmm. um, but give me your one two three and four kind of briefly tell me why of this AFC North well I'm probably with number one I'm gonna go with Baltimore okay. hands down they got the most dynamic football player probably since Michael Vick in the NFL. So, I, you know, Lamar Jackson, to me, former league MVP, and I still think that, you know, he, you could argue that he is the best football player. As you say, football player, best quarterback, I think there's he a case, probably man. be top three. Top there's three. Yes. There's top a case, top yeah. four, maybe. I think just could say he's top three, top four. But right. best player all around, he's the best all around football player in the NFL. There's a case. Um, yep. and, and then I think they have just one of the most physical – offenses and defenses so uh, i just think they they're 
the NFC, the NFC North, I mean, the AFC North is known for the cold weather and, uh, and you can't throw it a lot. And I t- think phys- physical play leads to a great running game. And I could see them being number one in that division. And, and Lamar, he runs the ball well, too. And it's just hard to come up with a game plan for them. So I got them at number one. Um, at number two, this was a little tricky because for some reason, for some small reason, I think Pittsburgh is going to be really good this year. Mm. For some small reason. That's my that's one of my sleeper teams. Now, is I that a feeling or are you basing that on that, how do you – where did you come up with that? I mean, that's not a bad theory. <laughs> Two things. I think they have one of the most underrated coaches in NFL history. Yeah. I think this dude has been at this job for years, and it seems like his players will run through the wall for him. And that's Mike Tomlin. Right. You know, and I, I love the way he coaches. It's next man up mentality. Um, I think they have an amazing running game. I think they have solid receivers. Their defense is always good. They got Mr. Watt on that side. They got Fitzpatrick on that side. I'm not worried about their defense. They always gonna be in every single right. game. Right. It's a matter of it's Trubisky or this rookie in Pittsburgh who's been coming on late in the preseason is gonna who who's gonna be the quarterback. Um, I think Trubisky is underrated. I think he was just in a bad organization in Chicago. I think he could be a solid a solid quarterback. I would take him over Zach Wilson. Right. I think he's I think he's solid. And if not, I do see a lot of potential in Pickett. So um, either way, I think they'll be improved. Um, then I have Cincinnati. Um, I like Cincinnati. This was hard because I think, in my opinion, they have the best receiver in, in football. I think the mantle's passed over to him. Forget Devontae Adams. When I saw him getting triple teamed in the playoffs last year and, and it couldn't be stopped, you know, and then to, to, to a couple of times where they missed some throws in the Super Bowl could have easy had a touchdown on Ramsey, you know? So right, right. I think they have the best receiver. I think they have a solid running game with Mixon. I think they have a top five quarterback. Um, and they just have a physical team that just never quits. How many times they were down in the playoffs? I think both every playoff game, they were down double digits and came back and won against Kansas city and against, um, what's it called in the first round? Um, I forgot who it was. They played in the first round, but you know, they're nice. And then the third team I had was um Well that was the third. Because you that had that was the third. The f- you had the Ravens and the Bengals. You had Ravens number one, Bengals number two, and then you the the Browns I have at number four. Apologize. Yeah, right. The Browns I would have at number four only because Watson's out for the first few games. Right. And I don't know how it's like because they ha- they have the best running game in the division. And I think who who's gonna take over for Watson? Is it Jacoby Bursett? I think it's Jacoby Brissett for Brissette. now. Yeah. Yeah. But I think if, if they start losing, I could see them trying to make a trade for Garoppolo. Right. Possibly. Because I think they want to – they have a good team now. They have two two of the best running back tandems with uh, Chubb and um, Hunt. And then, you know, you got uh, Cooper that you just got from the Dallas Cowboys. They got – and the defense is stacked with Ward and all the other boys in the, in the secondary. And then you got Miles Garrett at the – possibly – the best or second best defensive player or defensive lineman in the league too, and player. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, man, this is a tough division, tough division to grade. Um, golly, I, I am going to agree with you with the Browns being number four simply because you don't get Watson until I think week eleven or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, great running game. I think that's all the Browns are lacking is that starting quarterback. And so I think great running game. I think it was somebody, I think Chubb expressed, he was either Chubb or was it Hunt? One of those big running backs expressed some 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 disinterest in the team, but it sounds like they got that under control. Um, I think the defense is could be a top 10 defense at mm-hmm. best. It's a it's definitely a bend, don't break defense with great athletes. But I agree with you as I got them number four in the division in the sense that, you know, they don't have that that starting quarterback. And I think that's all they needed. Um, I've been telling people for years, and I know I'm going to catch flack for this on this podcast, but I never thought Baker Mayfield was the guy. I think with all that stuff that they – all that they had around them. I mean, they had, they had Odell, Jarvis Landry. They had those running backs, and that defense was coming along. I think they went to the playoffs one year with Baker at the helm. But I'm saying to myself, if you can't win with that defense, I mean, with that team, then you're not a starting quarterback. 
And I don't think he's a starting quarterback. I think he just won the job at Carolina, but we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they had an enormous amount of talent around him. And Jacoby Bursett is exactly that. He's not a starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. He is a backup quarterback. So I think for him, I think he can get 500. I think if he can get five or six games, which I think he's capable of doing, I think that'll be that. That's what you can expect from Cleveland not having a starting quarterback. That's my theory about backup quarterbacks, and I think Jacoby Bissett fits that. I think he can win six to five or six games, and I think if he does that, he overachieves. And I think if he does that, the Browns should be real happy. But yeah. I got them. I agree with you. I got them being the last team in the division. Now, this is very hard for me to rank these three because I'm with you on the Ravens in terms of. I do think Lamar Jackson is that guy. And people don't talk about him a lot like they should, but people forget mm-hmm. he's a league MVP. And he's improved his throwing. I never thought he had a bad arm. But, you know, because he ran so fast when he was at Louisville, yeah. people start saying that he couldn't, you know, and he's a black quarterback, you know, he's yeah. throwing all that. But I didn't never bother. Tried- but he is a league MVP, and they believe in him so much. Um I mean, I, I, it always takes me back to that game. I think it was the year before last where they were in a situation where they were on fourth down and John Harbaugh turns to him during the game and says, Lamar, you want to go for it? And Lamar says, yes. And mm-hmm. John Harbaugh called to play. He gets it, and I think they win the game. They either win the game or they converted that fourth down. And so that told me how important he is for that team. He's a tremendous athlete, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, he just checks all the boxes for me. And with that being said, I think Baltimore would have done a lot better last year, but they were plagued with injuries. Mm-hmm. And I'm not just talking about Lamar. I'm talking about, I mean, I think that everybody <laughs> six or seven guys on both sides of the ball go out. I mean, remember they were bringing in guys off the street yep. just to keep a team up. And then of course you got hit by COVID things like that. Um, But I don't know. And I hate to say this, I I, I want to agree with you because what you said about them is correct. That just the culture, you know what they're going to bring. They're going to be physical. They're going to be tough. They're going to be disciplined. They're going to run the ball down your throat. Lamar is going to make great plays. But I can't put them number one because I just don't know. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it looks like a year after injuries. And when I say I don't know what it looks like, I'm talking about the entire team. I can anticipate, like we said, what they're going to look like. Mm-hmm. But coming off injuries, they had so many injuries. Um, I'm just scared to put them in that number one spot. They could be. And what for the reasons you said, yes, they could be. If Lamar comes back to being who he is, and a team comes back to being what we know they are, what they traditionally been, no doubt. Even if they're not the number one team in this conference, I, they go to the playoffs. Um, agreed. Agreed. Pittsburgh, I agree with everything you said. Hall of Fame coach, Hall of Fame franchise, great defense. I don't even know if it's great defense, but it's a good enough defense for what? Um talented up and down the defensive backfield as well. Travisky. There is some truth to what you're saying and him being with the Bears. Things didn't play out. But I got to see where he's at first. I got to see where he's at. And I think um, he's in a great situation because Mike Tomlin will always put you in a situation to where all you have to do, and I'm talking about his quarterbacks in the past, is not turn the ball over. They're going to have a solid running game. They're going to have a great offensive line. Um, If you're not a big arm guy or an athlete, he's going to make the offense, and I'm talking about from the quarterback position, he's going to make it to where you got small dink and dunk plays, and they're going to beat you up down the field with small dink and dunk plays and a lot of smash mouth, hard nose running the football down your throat. So if Trubisky can do that, um, 
yes, there's success. With that being said, I have the Bengals Gerard as the number one team. And I'm going to tell you why. Simply because of this. What I saw from them in the playoffs last year was a team with an underdog mentality. And it starts with that quarterback. I mean, we're making a lot of comments about the quarterback. But Joe showed me some moxie. And what I mean by moxie is he showed me a lot of cool, calm, precise playing. And I think just with no him, line. Yeah. With no offensive line. Exactly. And I think what they were able to do last year with so much going against them in this tough of a division, I think they figured it out. And the reason why I say that is because all the adversity they faced last year, and of course they didn't face the adversity that Baltimore did, but you don't see young quarterbacks being able to bring their team up from that. Nobody had them going to the Super Bowl. Nobody had them. It's it's kind of like this. Do you remember? I can liken the experience to this is this is my depiction of the Bengals last year when they finished. You remember that year when the Patriots, I can't think of that year. Remember that year the Patriots on on course to be undefeated? Mm -hmm. I think they faced the Giants that year. Didn't the Giants go to the Super Bowl and beat them? I think that's the catch with David Tyree. Mm -hmm. And I believe that season, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if you remember this, Gerard, but that Giants team, to get to the Super Bowl, they went on the road every game in that playoff year. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting around, I was at a party, I was at a Super Bowl party, and everybody was saying, oh, man, the Patriots, they've gotten this far. They're not going to lose. You know, they've been doing this. And I said, listen, if anybody can beat the Patriots, it's the Giants. And I remember the guy that was sitting next to me saying, why do you say that? Are you just picking because they're underdog? I said, no, you got to understand this. This same season with the Giants, and I'm going to where same thing with the Bengals. The Giants started off, I think they lost the first five games. They bounced back. They barely got into the playoffs. They went on the road three times. What that told me about that team is they know how to handle adversity. And mm -hmm. that's what the Bengals brought for me last year. When you have a season like that, now barring if injuries, there's no injuries and all that. But when you have a season like that and you're over able in football, because all you got to do is be better than somebody on one Sunday. But when you have a season like that with a young quarterback able to overcome that kind of adversity, and it wasn't necessarily just like the Giants, but in terms of the having the odds stacked against you and you got a young quarterback and a young team with that chip on their shoulders, I think you can't put them in a situation where they can't perform. They've mm -hmm. shown me to be the team that knows how to respond to adversity. So with that being said, I'm going to put them number one, like they were last year. Okay. I'm going to put the Ravens number two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this, the Steelers number three, and I'm going to agree with you with the Browns on number four. I need to see what Trubisky's got. I just think that the Bengals have something. I don't think it was luck. I think other than injuries, I don't see any adverse situation stopping them. And they're going to come back with a chip on their shoulder because people are going to doubt them again because Lamar is coming back, because the Steelers is the traditional franchise that everybody, you know, loves. Um, so I've got Bengals. I've got Steelers. I've got Ravens. No, I take that back. Bengals, Ravens, Steelers, Browns. I could be wrong, and this is a tough division to grade, but that's what I'm sticking with for those reasons. I, time, time is going to tell. Time is going to tell. I got right, Lamar still being Lamar. Yeah, He's if he is, out. if he is, <clears throat> hey, that's but that's going to be the toughest division, them in the AFC West. Yes. Let's move to the AFC South, and then we'll go to the AFC West. AFC South, Titans, Colts, Texans, Jaguars, by far to me on paper, the weakest division in football. All right? Titans mm. won the division, of course, 12-5 and five last year. Colts, who held their own destiny, fumbled at the end 
All they had to do was win one game, I believe, against Jacksonville. They lost the game. And I think that's what got – they got that quarterback out of town, right? Who was the quarterback? Yeah, yeah he ended up going – they got Matt Ryan. Wentz. Out. Wentz. They, they got, got Wentz, Wentz out, out of town. town. Right. Colts finished second, no playoffs, nine and eight. Houston, Texas, which is hard for me to believe. I thought they finished last. Finished 4-13. And then the Jaguars, with Sunshine at the quarterback, Finished three and 14, Trevor Lawrence. So, Titans, Colts, Texans, Jaguars, give me your order and why. Who wins the AFC South and who's the last team? Colts, by far. Colts winning? Colts is going to be top three in the whole AFC. Wow. Okay. Tell me why. They, they have the best or the second best running back in the NFL. By stat wise, he's the best because last year he led the league in rushing. Yeah, yeah. Um, they don't talk about they, it. they have a receiver in Pittman who's amazing, and they just were lacking a quarterback to get to the receivers. So the receivers are all solid, but on the other side of the ball, Leonard, I think it is, at linebacker, yes. he's possibly the best linebacker in the NFL. Is that, possibly. Dar- is that Darius Leonard? Yeah, yeah, he, he could yeah. possibly be the best linebacker. In the I NFL. agree with you on that. Yes. So I, I think they're loaded. They've been loaded for the last two to three years. I just think they got a uh, they got a what's his name that came from the Chargers to yeah. play quarterback for them. They got him at the end of his career. Um, they got what's his name at the end of his career. Well, I'm not going to say end, but I think this is Wentz's last opportunity to try to shine. Otherwise, he's going to be out the league or a perennial. Uh, now, is that Wentz or Matt Ryan? Wentz, because I think Matt Ryan, I was getting to Matt Ryan. But I, I was talking about is how Wint, is Wentz in Indianapolis now? He was in Indianapolis. I was just okay. referring to all the quarterbacks that they had at the end okay, of the yeah, okay, who okay, weren't okay. doing well, right, right? And now they get Matt Ryan, who's late right. in his career, but I still think he has a lot left in. Right. I just think that he was playing for an organization that kind of was like on a rebuild when he left Atlanta. Right. So I think that they're going to be number one. Number two, I got the Titans. Um, and I got the Titans because I don't think Jacksonville is going to make that leap just yet, although they have a great coach. Right. So it won't surprise me if they if they finish 500 or just under 500. Jacksonville will surprise some boys. Uh, but I got Tennessee, Jacksonville, and then you got your Houston home team. I just think that they're just trying to get the number one pick so they could get their quarterback, their franchise quarterback next year. I don't have a lot to say about them. They, they have the cornerback that y'all drafted. Right. which is supposed to be uh, one of the best corners. He possibly could come into the league and be a top five corner right now. Right. Um, so, yeah. I'm riding order. with you. I, this is the first one I totally agree. Mm-hmm. I think the Colts, I think the Colts are right there. I think the Colts didn't win because they didn't have a solid quarterback. I mm-hmm. never believed in Wentz. Um, Rivers was old. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to me, Last year, they had a lot of weapons. They had the running back, um, and I love his game. I love the way he runs. I love the way they call plays for him. If they would have had just a little bit of leadership, they could have – they controlled their own destiny last year. They could have gotten into the playoffs. That shows me that they didn't have any leadership, and I hate to keep pointing at the quarterback, but you go to Jacksonville – Jacksonville is the worst team in the division. Mm-hmm. You got to win that game. I mean, you can point fingers and every nobody played well for them. I'm not saying it, you know, but to me, your quarterback, your leaders of your team has to will you over that team in that game. Mm-hmm. I mean, Gerard, if I told you if any team that you like, that it was between them and Jacksonville to get to the playoffs, you would bet that they would beat Jacksonville. Yep. So to me, that was the biggest letdown. I do think I'm kind of, you know, I like, I, I, I do like Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan, this is exactly what he needs. I think he needed a change of scenery. Mm-hmm. I think they've done all they can do. And Atlanta's no going nowhere. You know, the organization itself, Arthur Blank, he's got to do some things down there. Um. I think I don't think Matt Ryan is Superman, but I think with the structure that the Colts have, that they always got a big, strong offensive line that can move defensive guys off. That's why the running game is so good. Mm-hmm. I think Matt Ryan fits that mold in the sense that he won't turn it over if he's got protection. 
I don't think they're asking him to run or scramble or make plays. I think they're asking him to game manage, which I think his best years in Atlanta was him game managing. Mm -hmm. He had Julio. I think he had Rowdy White down there. He had a hell of a receiving core. And all they wanted him to do was complete passes. They didn't ask him to scramble. They didn't ask him to do that. I think that's the same structure that the Colts have. And I think the Colts have an underrated defense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I agree with you, man. We can even move past this. I think the Titans have a chance to make the playoffs. But if we start talking about wild cards, I don't think they win the division. I think they get edged out by somebody else with wild cards. I just don't think that the Titans have enough in their quarterback. And I hate to keep pointing to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. But if I'm playing the Titans, I'm stacking the box. And I'm telling you, Tannehill has got to be. Question though. Question though. When you when you watch their draft pick that they just drafted, you can't sit here and tell me that Tannehill's long for that position. No, he's not. Because Malik Willis, Malik yeah, Willis will be right. the quarterback by game eight of this season. Bold prediction. Right. And I hope so. Because if the thing is, I like that kid. If he steps mm -hmm. in, if they were to play him earlier, which I don't think they are, and he was to become something. I think they have a chance at the division if he's yeah. who I think he is. I you know, actually gotta, want him to do well so that yeah, they could trade Tannehill to the Jets. Right. I'll take him with the Jets, man. Well, by them getting that, by them getting Willis is telling me that they know Tannehill is on his way out. Yeah. To me. You know what I'm saying? But again, they don't know what Willis is right now in the NFL. We don't know what he is right now. He's got a great upside. Um, I still think they're better than the Texans and the Jaguars. Um, but I just think Indianapolis is a more complete team. But, yes, if Malik Willis is anything that I think he is, then they've got a shot to make the playoffs. If they get him if they get him in early enough. See, by game eight, it may be too late. You see what I'm I'll saying? My, I tell you this. I think he's better than Zach Wilson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I think he's better than Zach yeah, Wilson. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I no think doubt. he's better than Tua. Well, we'll find out. I don't know. Yeah. But we'll we'll find out. He very well, right. I, I think his career, yes. Mm -hmm. I think, but I don't know right now. We'll see. Because he hadn't taken a snap in a real NFL game yet. And in the True. NFL, Gerard, this is a league that you are what you are on that field. Mm -hmm. So, especially quarterbacks. So we'll yeah. see. But he's definitely got all the tools. All right. So I we we agree on everything on the AFC South. I think it's the weakest division in the NFL. AFC West. Oof. This is a hard division, mm. and I'm so excited about this division. Last year, the Chiefs won, of course, finished in 12 and five, with the Raiders also going to the playoffs. They itched in at 10 and seven, with the Chargers finishing third at nine and eight. And the Broncos finishing seven and ten. AFC West, Gerard. We know we got the big, we got the big, 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 big accusation of Russell Wilson to the Denver Broncos. I say that because I'm biased. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks. You got Justin Herbert, who has a great upside with the Chargers. You've got the Raiders who've added Devontae Adams. Wait, 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 wait. You skipped my man first. Who? You didn't even mention Khalil Mack going to the Chargers. Yeah, we're going to get to Osa. that. Woof. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Woof. Um, And then, of course, you got the Chiefs who, you know, you got Mahomes and you got Eric Bieniemy. Give me your one, two, three, and four and tell me why. Ooh, I had to I had to really, 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 really sit on this for a while. I had to sit on this for a while. Tough division, man. But I'm gonna be courageous. I'm gonna be courageous and I'm gonna go with the Broncos. As number one? As the number one. Wow, you gotta tell me why. I think I think I think for years when people used to always talk about Aaron Rodgers and all them boys, I always thought Russell Wilson was on their level. I still think he's on their level. 
I just think that towards the end of the Seattle career, he didn't have all that talent around him. And Beast Mode used to open up a lot of stuff for him in Seattle with the play action. Um, but he has some he has some troopers over there with, you know, um Court Courtland Sullen, Jerry Judy, KJ um Hamler. Yeah. You have Javante Williams. Javante like, Williams. Yes. Oh, and you have Melvin Gordon. I think he this is the most talent he has ever had. And I think their defense is solid. Like they they've known to have a good, solid, yeah, right, always right. been solid. And they got Patrick Sertain. You know, this kid could be possibly a top corner in this league. Yes. Um, and they got Darby. I really personally think they're going to win the division. Um, I think that number two comes in the Chargers. I think Chargers is also a complete team. And when I say these one and two, I think it could come down to if they play each other at the end of the season type of thing. Um, because I think it could be 1A and 1B, to be honest with you, and then everybody else. Um, but I like the addition of Cleo Mack. I always thought they had a great receiving core. Eckler is a utility back that does a little bit of everything. And Haber, H- Herbert is a top five quarterback in the league. I think as long as you have a top five, um, you're always going to be in the, in the conversation. Um, then we have uh, Kansas City and, and Raiders. Raiders. <sighs> I'm gonna say the Raiders. Um, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say that I'm putting Kansas City as last because I think they're the least well-rounded team. Their defense ain't there, and I think that playing in this tough division is gonna be a lot of scrappy games, and everyone has a better defense than them, and that's what's gonna be the difference. That offense without no Tariq Hill. That dynamicness of being able to know that you have two people on Tariq Hill and then you got Kelsey with the one-on-one or you got one of those other boys that they got or like Hartman who runs like a 4-2 or whatever like that. They could just throw them on streets. That stuff ain't going to be there. It's going to be a lot more, no more drives where you're hitting home runs. You're going to have the drives where it's like, all right, let me bunt. Let me get a single. Let me get a double. Let me steal a base. It's going to be one of those type of offenses for for uh, Kansas City and at the end of the day, I think the Raiders have talent. They have the best receiver or the second best, depending on him and Jamon Chase, in the league. Um, I think Carr is underrated, never got the respect that he's due. I think he's always been a strong, solid quarterback. Um, I think Josh Jacobs is one of the best running backs in the league. Um, I think their defense, uh, I mean, Waller, too, at tight end. Great. They got Renfro, who is also, his route running is probably like Cooper Cup. You know, so there's a uh, they got talent, and then you want to go to the other side of the ball. You got Waller at defensive end, and you they picked up somebody else at defensive end, Chandler Chandler Jones from uh, Chandler Jones, that's right. Yeah, yeah, the came brother of Arizona, John Jones. Yeah, yeah the brother of John Jones. Yep, yeah. and this boy, and I seen him, I seen him in high school because he's originally from Binghamton when we went to college. Right, and right. and I met him before. Uh, him and him and his brother, this, these boys are nice. His other brother played for the Ravens for a little bit for that's a while. Right. But um, right, yeah. but uh, yeah, I just think that they're a little bit more talented than uh, Kansas City. So you got and you got Broncos, Broncos, Chargers, Chargers Raiders, mm-hmm. Kansas City. Yeah, and there's something about having a quarterback that's been to the Super Bowl twice, who's been around the league multiple times. Wilson's not going to have a lot of mistakes, so he's not going to lose you games. You know, you're always going to be in the game with Russell Wilson. If you go back to his whole entire career. You were never out of the game when Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson was in there. Okay. All right. All right. Quickly, I got – I mean, I, <laughs> this is a hard division. This is harder to grade to me than the AFC North. Um, oh, man. You got the Chiefs last. You know, at first when you said that, I thought that was ridiculous. You know, being that, you know, I know they don't have Tyreek Hill – but I'm saying to myself, man, you still got Mahomes. You still got Mahomes. You still got Kelsey. You still got Andy Reid. You still got Eric B. Enemy. Um, the only thing that you're taking from that is Tyreek Hill, which is a big piece. But I have to disagree with you on that. And I, man, it's hard to disagree with you because I understand what you're saying. I don't know if the ship has sailed in Kansas City yet. I don't think that Tyreek Hill's departure, it definitely pushes them down, but I don't know if they're the last of the division. 
And simply because saw seeing what I saw in that playoff game, um, and I, would they lose to they'd end up losing to Cincinnati, right? I think they mm -hmm. ended up losing to Cincinnati. They went back to the AFC Championship game. Um, golly, man! I, but I do understand why you got them last. I'm gonna put the Raiders last simply because of this. Um, McDaniel's I, is a rookie coach. Yeah, and I, I don't, second time around coach. Yeah. yeah, well, he's with Denver. Remember, he went mm -hmm. to Denver for a little while, and he ended up having to come back. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not a believer in Josh McDaniels. I'm not saying that I can't be, but so far, I don't think he's a head coach. He, well, he's. Let me. I'm not gonna say he's not a head coach. I'm gonna say he's yet to prove that he's a head coach. Mm -hmm. Um, Derek Carr. I don't think he's ever played bad football. Um. But it's something about him, and maybe it's not him. Maybe it's the situation. The Raiders have always had a lot of offensive coordinators, different coaches, so I'll give him that leeway in a sense. Um, with that being said, they do have Devontae Adams. Um, they have some questions on, on the offensive line. They have some questions in coaching. Uh, I think the defense is uh, – is, is a serviceable defense. What I mean by that, I think they're middle of the pack defense. I know they've added some pieces, mm -hmm. but until I see it come together, I've got to put them last. And that's not a bad last. That's not, you know, I just think this division is that loaded. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I do think they could make the playoffs. It's definitely in their reach. They made the playoffs last year, which I don't know how in the midst of all the craziness they had going on in the organization, they did a great job to make it to the playoffs, but it's not an indictment on them per se. I just think these three other teams are that much. They're just great teams. When I look at them and people are saying, well, how can you say that about Denver? I think Russell Wilson, I've always been a believer in Russell Wilson. I've Seattle Seahawks is one of my teams. Um, even after the Legion of Boom, for him to be able to take them to the playoffs after the departure of Beach Mode, of Beast Mode, after the departure of Cam Chancellor and the Legion of Boom, I think he's that guy. And I think that's all that Denver needed. Mm -hmm. I think Denver needed a franchise quarterback. They haven't had a franchise quarterback in years. I want to say since Peyton and then Peyton. Peyton, yeah, Peyton. Since Peyton. Right. So they had to put some pieces around him. And did they win a Super Bowl? I know they ended up going to the Super Bowl. I think it was Seattle that played them, huh? When they, they won, won a Super, Super Bowl when they had John Elway. I think that was the last one. Yeah, but they didn't win with Peyton, right? They went to the Super Bowl. Oh, right? actually, they did win with Peyton. They did win with Peyton. That's right. They, they did. did. You're right. They You're did right. win with Peyton. They, they won did. with Peyton. They did. He, that was that. Did. That Yeah. Yeah, but they had studs around Peyton. Peyton yeah. was still good, but he wasn't what he used to be but yes they that, did win Emmanuel Sanders right that, right yeah, right and the guy that passed away not too long ago um I can't think of his name I know they're talking about yeah rest in peace um so I think that's all they needed and I think that's what Russell Wilson needed I think he needed a change of scenery I think it was either going to be him or Pete Carroll and it seems like the organization kept Pete Carroll mm -hmm. I don't know why you wouldn't bring him back and Pete Carroll doesn't believe in you know, oh my God, upgrading the offensive line, but that's for a whole nother situation. Yeah. Um. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say the Chargers are number one for me. I think the addition of Cleo Mack is exactly what they needed. I think he's a game changer on defense. Mm -hmm. I think he's underrated. We give him his flowers, but you know, there's Aaron Donald, there's J.J. Watt, people that overshadow him because he hadn't been on a winning team. Mm -hmm. I think now he's on a winning team. I think he's a candidate, a viable candidate now if he stays healthy for defensive player of the year. I love Justin Herbert. What I've seen from him, he's got the Josh Allen effect. Mm -hmm. um, he may even be a slight better athlete than Josh Allen. Um, I think Herbert is the new thing as far as a quarterback, big, strong, fast, athletic, can throw. I love his decision-making. He's gotten better and not turned the ball over. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've got pieces. I think they got a great coach, a coach that's showing himself, proving himself. So I'm going to take the Chargers as number one. I'm going to take the Broncos as number two. 
I'm going to take the Chiefs as number three, and I'm going to take the Raiders as number four. Okay. But I okay. I think this is the best division on paper right now in football. I agree. I, I don't – I do not disagree. Uh, and I, I just – you know, you could, you could possibly – I don't know if it's possible. I think you get two playoff teams out of this division easily. But the third may be knocking on the door. But we'll get to that. All right, let's move to the NFC. Let's go NFC East. Cowboys, Eagles, Washington football team, and Giants. Give me your one, two, three, and four. Last year, the Cowboys won a division at 12 and five. Um, the Eagles, nine and eight, which I think they got a wild card and they were bounced out early. Of course, there's the football team, the Washington football team, and the Giants. Give me your one, two, three, and four in the NFC East. I'm going to go with number one. I'm going to go with Philly. I got Philly going number one because I think Jalen Hurts has been the most disrespected quarterback. And I think he's, first of all, I want to go back a year before last when they should have made the playoffs when they were beating Dallas and the coach took them out the game and put the backup in. From there, I felt like that was where the the major disrespect started to happen towards him because they were also questioning, do we bring him back? But I think he showed that he's a smart, capable strong athletic quarterback who could be dynamic in both ends of the game. I think that they added superior talent across the board on their squad. Um, I think they, Miles Sanders is one of the most underrated running backs. I think um, AJ Brown from the Titans was one of the biggest acts of resistance that any team made this offseason. That boy, good. That boy, good. Mm-hmm. Devontae Smith is coming back for a second season. He had a solid season last year. So now that he's not even the number one option no more, and A.J. Brown will be seeing double teams, that opens up the game differently. And then they got a strong defensive line. They made their team better defensively. And then they picked up, uh, what's his name, that cornerback? Um, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, what's his name again? Okay. James Bradbury. James Bradbury. To okay, go with yeah. Darius Slate. Yeah, you're right. To go with right. Darius Slate. Those Michael, two. Man. Yeah, I could yeah. see him, but I couldn't remember his name. Those yeah. two together in that division is going to be a problem. After that, I got, um, I want to say Dallas, but I feel like Dallas is always disappointing. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to skip them over. I'm going to put the Washington Redskins. I think, I think. Football th- team, man. Okay. Yes. Redskins. Football team. Yeah. My bad. I apologize too. But the uh, Washington football team. Now you're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all, I got to be, you know, politically correct too. So, but uh, yeah, with, with, with the Washington football team, I just think that one, they got the better coach. Ron Rivera is way better to, than McCarthy to me. Even though McCarthy won his championship, he's still kind of like, I don't know. His teams just seem soft to me. Right. But Rivera has a tough team. I think he has uh, that Dotson pickup from Penn State. That receiver, I think, is pretty solid. And McLaren McLaren is one of the best receivers in the league. I think he's unheralded and disrespected. They probably have the best backup quarterback in the NFL, maybe. I don't care what people say that. Heineke, Heineke. uh, I, I don't know how to say it right. If I'm saying it right, it's Heineke, I think it is. Every time he started and I watched him play, that boy is good. I think he suffers from being labeled as a backup where you don't want to start someone like that because there's a lot of people that I feel like there's a few of those in the league, and I think that he's good enough to be a starter and that he's really underrated. He's like that Fitzpatrick that comes out of nowhere or something. Um, after that, then I put Dallas. Actually, yeah, after that, I put Dallas, and I put the Giants. Mm-hmm. Uh I, I just don't think the Giants have their quarterback yet. Right. Um, I do like Tyrod Taylor, but he always gets hurt at oh, some point right. in time. Oh. But I do think Tyrod Taylor will take the job from um, from uh, what's his name? Uh, ah, what's what's Daniel Brown? Daniel Brown. I think he'll take his job. So yeah, um, yeah, I I I agree with you in terms of your order. I got the Eagles. Um, I'm gonna switch two and three with you. I still think the Cowboys are credible. Um, I think when the Cowboys have all their pieces, and it's not so much a soap opera, I think they're number two, simply because of Washington. Excuse me, Washington always has promise. Mm-hmm. Um. And they've and they've added some different things. 
Um, I just, for whatever reason, I just think the Washington football team is just, I think they're years away mm -hmm. winning something significant. Um, I mean, there is an upside, but at the end of the day, I I just have them. I mean, to me, I'm going to put them at number three just because I think the Giants are so bad. But I think Washington and, and, and the Giants could exchange. They could flip-flop. I got them both at the bottom of the division. And that's the only reason why I'm putting the Cowboys number two. I mean, there's nothing special that the Cowboys did in the offseason. Mm -hmm. I think they're the fact that they gave Dak that that – Big contract. They believe in Dak. Um, Dak is too inconsistent for me. There's games where he looks great, and then there's games that he looks like he shouldn't even be in the National Football League as a quarterback. Do you think they trade him this offseason? I don't they know. Don't make the playoffs? I don't know because the way Jerry I'll take Jones, him with the Jets. <laughs> the way Jerry Jones looks at it, if they make the playoffs, I think Dak sticks around. Um, I mean, you got to say this about the Cowboys, even if you don't like them, they are talented. They're one of the talented teams when you go from the the whole 53 man roster. And the thing about the Cowboys is if all cylinders are go. If everybody's healthy, which is we know that's almost impossible in the NFL. But if everybody's healthy and everything's turning, they're a Super Bowl contender, whether you mm -hmm. like them or not. You know, Zeke still has some good years in him. Um, offensive line is always solid. I think C.D. Lamb is going to be, I think it's nobody in front of him now. I think, who's that, Amari Cooper is gone. Um, so he's the guy, and I think he can be the guy. And on Dak Prescott's best day, he's one of the top quarterbacks. I hate to say that because I hate Dallas. But if I'm being if I'm being truthful, I mean, let's not forget whether it was last year or the year before. I can't remember what year it was, but that opening game against Tampa Bay, when they almost beat Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. Dak, I think that was Dak's first game coming back. He had got the big contract. He was hurt the year before. I mean, they look unbelievable. And the only thing you can say about the Cowboys is that because of the expectations they underachieve. But I mean, last year they won the division, Gerard, 12 and 5. And everybody says they didn't have a good season because the ex expectations were so high. I mean, playing in Dallas is like playing for the Yankees. Yeah, you get to right. the playoffs. And if you get to the playoffs and you lose in the American League championship, you underachieve. Just like the Cowboys, they got to the playoffs, they lost, they underachieved, but they're still a good football team, you know? And so I agree with you. I think the Eagles are just – I think the Eagles are just on such a high, and I think I think the Eagles as an organization, their confidence has been boosted because they gave Jalen a chance and it worked out. Mm-hmm. And I think if Jalen does, win, and he's a true leader too. Yeah, he's a great leader. I mean, he's a kid mm -hmm. from here, from Houston, and he comes from a good family. The kid always works hard. Uh, that's what I was telling uh, Ant. I was talking to him. Shout out to Anthony Green from Philadelphia. I was telling him. I said, one thing you gonna know about Jalen. I mean, he was a power lifter champion in 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 high school, Gerard. He, mm -hmm. I mean, they power lift something like five hundred pounds, but. The kid has tremendous work ethic. And I was telling Ant this. He's never not going to be prepared. He's mm -hmm. going to always be in shape. He's going to always know his playbook. And he has some talent for the NFL. Mm -hmm. If you got a team where you can put a structure around him to where he's not the guy you always have to rely on, but he's one of the guys you should rely on, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You can win, meaning if you got a well-rounded football team around them, you can win. So I agree. I think I just think the Eagles are on such an uproar that they got a chance to they got a chance to really shock some people. But the Cowboys are still good, man. As much as we don't like them, um, all right, the Cowboys are good as much as we don't like them, and as much as we don't like them, they went to the playoffs last year and they mm -hmm. finished twelve and five. They won the division, so. My order is, I'm with you. Eagles winning the division. 
I'm going to put Cowboys at number two, and then I think Washington will be number three just because I just think the Giants are just a train wreck. And I'm going to put the Giants at number four. And that's my NFC East. All right, I let's agree move. with that. Yeah. Let's move to the NFC North. Packers, Vikings, Bears, Lions. Packers, of course, won this division 13 and four last year. Vikings at number two, who did not make the playoffs, eight and nine. Bears at number three. And of course, the Lions at number four. Give me your order. And I think this is to me, this is an easy division, but you could have something different. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Packers winning it. I think that they have the best defense and the best quarterback in the division, and they just know how to win. Aaron Rodgers makes anybody look good, and he has all rookie receivers, but they'll all be fine because it's Aaron Rodgers. Um, so I got them at number one, and number two might be the biggest surprise. I think you probably would have put Minnesota, and I, I'll find out in a second. But I personally think it's gonna be Detroit. I think Detroit's culture is changing. I think Aaron Goff, uh, what's his name, Goff. Uh, is always being disrespected as a quarterback ever since he left the Rams. And people forget that he went to a Pro Bowl before. He's went to the Super Bowl. And he's always just been a solid quarterback. So I got the number two. Um, I got uh, Vikings number three. Vikings have Cook. They got Jefferson. They got Cousins. The issue is Cousins. You just don't know which Cousins you're going to get. He's like Jekyll and Hyde in the season. He could lose the first six and then run off ten in a row and then lose the last three that they need to get into the playoffs. That's just, you know, who he is. Um, so I'm putting them third, and then I'm putting Chicago last. I think they will win more games, um, but I don't think they're ready just yet because I don't think they have enough offensive firepower around Phillips. That's my prediction. I'm actually going to ride with you on this. Um, I, I, You know, Maybe I'm a little partial. I've been watching Hard Knocks. <laughs> Detroit is on Hard mm. Knocks. And I like what I'm seeing. I like the culture. I like the coaching staff. Um, I like the, the draft new, pick. I like the draft pick, the kid from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um, I think he's exactly what they need. I think they've been abysmal on their defensive line. So you leaves got a young kid that you got to count for on that line, and he looks good. I mean, he looks good on the bull rush. He looks good moving around, um, and it looks like they're going to turn him loose and let him go after the quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, I actually I agree with you. I have them number two. I think the Vikings are number three, and what I mean by that is I'm I'm with you a hundred percent. I don't I think I think it's safe to say that Cousins is not a starting quarterback to me. Yeah. I, I think agree. he's a, I think he's a great a good a good backup. I think him and Bridgewater probably I even give Bridgewater a slight edge. I think what the Vikings should do and I think that's the only thing they need is a quarterback. I think mm -hmm. they should bring somebody in for a quarterback competition for Cousins. See what he has. Um so yeah. I'm with you. I think this is an easy division. I, 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 Packers, Lions, Vikings, and Bears. I don't know what the Bears are gonna do. I don't know. I think I think it's some hope there with Justin Fields, and I yeah. think they've got a pretty good defensive line over there. But they didn't do anything in the draft to me that was worth you know mentioning or anything like that. I don't think they're going anywhere. So I'm with you, Packers, Lions, Vikings, and Bears. All right, two more. NFC South. Buccaneers 13 and 4 last year. Saints 9 and 8. Falcons 7 and 10. Panthers 5 and 12 with the Buccaneers being the only team that made the playoffs. Um, NFC South, give me your top, give me your four. I'm going with the Saints taking number one. Um, I like Chris Olave. I like uh what's his name coming back at receiver. Um Oh, what's his name? Oh, the dude that's a Jordan athlete. He was hurt last Michael year. Michael Thomas. Michael yes. Thomas. Yes. Chris Alave. Jarvis, Jarvis Landry. Um, I think Jameis Winston. Jame, Jameis Winston is going to have one of the best uh, comeback seasons. Is coming Kamara off the injury. Uh, Kamara, he suspended the first few games, but they brought Mark Ingram in again, who used to be with the team, who's a great leader. leader. Um, they always had a, a strong offensive line and defensive line. Defensively, they might be top five in the league. 
hands down. I think they could be top five. They got Marcus May from the Jets. They have uh, Tyrone Matthew. They have Marshawn Lattimore. And they have uh, a couple other, uh, which you call studs, on the, mm-hmm. off the, on the defensive line as well, Cameron Jordan, you know, like mm-hmm. in DeMario Davis that used to play with the Jets. So mm-hmm. I personally think they go number one. Um, I think Tampa goes number two. Um, Tampa goes number two. I think that they're going to struggle early on because they don't really have a strong offensive line. And Tom, as sometimes before, he just he adjusts to his uh, new line. It's going to take him, you know, maybe I say about three out of the first five games might be losses for Tampa, in my opinion. Um, then I think they'll hit their stride, but I think they'll be, yeah, they'll be a good team. They'll make the playoffs. But nothing spectacular to me. That's my honest opinion. Um, then I think you have huh, – it's going to hurt to say this. I might sound crazy, but I think Atlanta's going to come in third, and I think Carolina's going to come in fourth. Yeah, that's not crazy. Yeah. So I, that, I agree with everything you said. I'm going to flip-flop the Saints and the Bucks. Um mm-hmm. uh, I think you 100% right and the Saints is a they are they're going to they have a lot of additions that I like. Um in particular I like Thomas coming back at receiver. That's his name Michael Thomas. Yeah, Michael Thomas. I yeah. Um I like the Chris Olave. Yeah, I like him. I like the Honey Badger pickup. I like Mark Egram even though I think Mark Egram is kind of like a journeyman to me. He still was productive. I think the last team he was with was Baltimore, right? Mm-hmm. He got hurt too last year with Baltimore, I think, when they had all those injuries. No, think, Tyrone Matthew was with Kansas City. No, I'm talking about Mark Ingram. Oh, Mark Ingram, yeah, yeah. he was. Yeah, with, I know uh, Tyrone. I know Matt. Matt, yeah, I know he came from uh, Kansas City because he left the Texans and went to Kansas City. Um, however, I still think the Buccaneers have a solid structure. Um, I think those receivers. I think those receivers are going to be chomping at the at the mouth a little bit to prove themselves. Is it Evans and uh, what's the other guy? That's Goodwin. Going? Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I think they're going to be hungry. They should be hungry to prove themselves. I think this, even though the offensive line is a little shaky, I think I think Bruce Arians. You have to have a solid offensive line for Tom Brady because he can't run. Mm-hmm. Um. I think they're bringing back pretty much everybody. That defense has aged a little bit, which to me is the, probably the reason why, one of the reasons why they didn't go to the Super Bowl last year. I still think they're a solid contender for the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I don't have them winning it, but I'm going to say them number one, Saints number two, Falcons oh. number three, and Panthers number four. I just think the Falcons and the Panthers, they just – I think both of them have moved on from players that they've had before, and I think they're starting over. I know in in, in for the Panthers, you know, they had a they who they have they have Baker Mayfield. Their name is their starter, and it, it was between him. It was it Sam Darnold down there too, or something. Mm-hmm. Like that. I just think they're a graveyard for quarterbacks. That's just personally me. Christian McCaffrey is always hurt. As great as he is, he's always hurt. I think he's still there. I don't know what they have on defense. Um, and I think the Falcons are just trying to pick up the pieces. Moving yeah. along from the Matt Ryan era, I think they're starting over. And I mm-hmm. just they, they're still figuring it out. I kind of look at them kind of like uh, maybe like Jacksonville. Even though Jacksonville has a young quarterback, I mm-hmm. think they're still trying to put things together. But I do have the Bucks. I'm gonna flip flop your one and two. I'm gonna have the Bucks winning that division with the Saints with a possible, possible can possibly win that division or possibly snatch a wild card if they overachieve. Okay. All right, last division, and then we'll give our Super Bowl prediction. NFC La- West, <sighs> NFC West, Rams, of course, Super Bowl champions, win the division at twelve and five last year. Um. Coming in second place is the Cardinals. Arizona did make the playoffs 11 and 6. 49ers, I believe they made the playoffs last year, right? Correct? Mm-hmm. At 10 and 7. 
And then you have the Seahawks at seven and ten. Um, three teams that made the playoffs out of this division last year. Give me your one through four. One is gonna be the Rams. Um so hard with them though. Um, because I won't be surprised if San Fran is great. I won't be surprised if Arizona is great. We all know Seattle's number four. So we could just put that down and we don't have to speak on this. Yes, um so Rams is number one. I'm gonna go with uh San Fran number two, uh-huh. Arizona number three. And I'm gonna go with San Fran number two for the reason that Hopkins is out for the first part of the season with that suspension. Right. If Hopkins was there with Marquise Brown, I would go with uh Cardinals. But since uh he's not back yet, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with uh with the San Fran with number two, Arizona number three. And I think this is one of the few divisions that could have three playoff teams, possibly. Okay. I'm gonna step out on a limb and say Oh man. Yeah, this is tough. Um yeah, Rams. Oh man. I don't like I don't like the fact and it may not be true. Let me tell you what I don't like about the Cardinals. I don't like the fact that Hopkins is out. I don't like the fact that Chandler Jones is gone. And I don't like, and I don't know if it's true, where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't like what I heard about Kyler Murray this summer. I don't like the contract situation that his team was jockeying for from the organization. I don't like the fact that the organization kind of, you know, drug their feet on that. And I don't like what I heard about whether it's true or not. I don't like the fact that they said something about him having a stipulation of him. I think it was studying film. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. And here's the reason why I don't like these things. It's too much coming from the inside of that organization. And I don't like that. And I don't like the fact, like you said, with Hopkins being out. Mm-hmm. I think Chandler Jones was more of a key role on that defense than than people what we've been led to believe. Um, so I it's a lot of things that to me that's coming from Arizona from within that makes me not trust them. And what I mean by that is sometimes to me, when you start hearing about a lot of inner things going on with the organization, it makes you wonder how, how stable the franchise is. Mm -hmm. And it all could all not be true, but I don't like that. With that being said, um, I'm going to stick with the Rams at number one simply because uh, I think all the guys, I mean, losing Von Miller is a loss. I don't know if it's a big loss because of his age, and I don't know. I think he did. Did he play every down? I'm not sure if he played every down. He might have been a second or third down specialist, something like that. I know he contributed to that defense, but I don't think it's a great loss. It's a loss. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a great loss. Everybody's coming back. I still think Aaron Donald's got a lot in the tank. I think that the quarterback has found something over mm-hmm. here. Um, and so everybody's coming back. They got Allen Robinson too. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I'm glad. Most one, of, one of the most underrated receivers. receivers. He just right. hasn't played in a good system. And I think that along with Cooper Cup is a great wide receiver addition. And if it they bring Odell the, back. Right. <laughs> and it might be one of the – it might be we may be looking past that. I think that's an underrated move. Yeah. But with that being said, I think everybody comes back. I don't think the Rams lose anything. I like McVay as a coach. It's just too much coming from Arizona that I don't like from the inner part of that organization. I could mm-hmm. be wrong. I just don't like that. I think San Francisco is on. I think they're like Philly in a sense. I think they're moving up. And they were they were hit by the injury bug last year, and they're very competitive. I like what I saw from them. The fact that they made the playoffs, 
Um, was it Garoppolo that was a quarterback last year? I don't think, yeah. Um, so, and then I think is is it Shanahan that's the head co- the the young Shanahan that's the the head coach out there? Is it Kyle? Oh, San Francisco? San yeah, Francisco. Yeah. yeah. It. I I like him as a coach. Kyle Shanahan. Kyle yeah, Shanahan. I love him as a coach. I love, I love their whole system. Right. I love right. their playmakers. I love right. everything. Right. Right. The only reason why I'm not putting him above the Rams is of Lance. If they start Trey Lance, a uh, young athletic quarterback, but yet to be proven. Um, I believe in the kid. I believe in him, too, but I just I need, believe in the kid. I need to see more. I need to see mm-hmm. more. I can feel you on that, though. If, if Yeah, I think if if he is who I think he is, yes. Yes. But until I see him. I need a little bit more from him, and I'm not saying a little bit more good playing at the I, I need to see him in more situations. Yeah. Before I can see him say, two minute warning, see right, him, see right, him all, right. I know third, what I got third and eight. You know? Right. Uh, I'm not picking the Rams to repeat, but I know what I got in the Rams. So I've got the Rams at number one. I got the 49ers at number two. I got the Cardinals at number three. And then of course I got Seattle. I think Seattle has to start over. I think Seattle may consider maybe moving away from Pete Carroll. Um, I think it was a big mistake to let Russell Wilson leave town. And they may mm-hmm. have been rewarding him saying, you're not going to win here, go somewhere else. I don't know. But I think it was, I think you don't let a quarterback of that caliber walk out. So, again, I got the Rams, Niners, Cardinals, Seattle. With that being said, Give me your prediction of who wins the AFC and the NFC, who's in the Super Bowl, and then who wins it all. I'm going to say AFC. It really comes down to me, Ravens and Buffalo. Um, Whoever has home field advantage. But I'm going to go – I'm going to go with the Ravens. Okay, you got the Ravens winning the AFC? AFC. And winning the NFC, you might think I'm crazy. I might be the only person that says this, but I got the Saints winning the NFC. Yeah, you are. I have the Saints winning the NFC. Saints. So you got the Saints playing the Ravens in the Super Bowl, and who wins that? Oh, of course, the Ravens. But I think that uh, you're going to see a hell of a season from Jameis Winston. Mm. You, you're going to see a hell of a season from that boy. I think he has so much to prove. I always thought he was underrated. Yeah, he threw a lot of interceptions, but he was always at the top of the league in yardage and, and making big plays. And I think now he has that under control. I don't think he's a, as a wild gunslinger as he used to be before. And I personally think that the Saints have that type of talent to come out the NFC on both sides of the ball. They have playmakers, game changers, on both sides of the ball. Well, I disagree. I disagree. Um, man, I didn't know you was a James Wilson. And man. and it could be Bills. Bills. I wouldn't be surprised that Bills. What you call to Bills? Uh, uh, Saints. But Ravens and Bills is the only one. I'm I'm unsure. I'm really unsure. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going I'll say with Ravens. This. I'm gonna go with the Bills. I'm gonna say the Bills. And that NFC is ooh. Rams, Philly. Probably Rams again if it, if it's not the Saints. Yeah, I don't know. It's so hard for teams to repeat. Um here's my dilemma. Of course I want to say the Packers. But we know they have playoff meltdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what I'll say the Bills I'll say the Bills and I'll say the 49ers Okay. I say the Bills, okay. I say the Bills and the 49ers. And the reason is I think the 49ers, when I look at their organization from top to bottom, much like the Ravens, they were hit with a lot of adversity last year. Injuries, 
And so they did they they won. Did they go to the NFC championship? Because they went, they went to the, they went to the AFC. Yeah, they went to the NFC championship. And so to me, and I don't think Garoppolo is bad as people make him. Mm-hmm. I think with Shanahan, whether it be Garoppolo, is he still there? He's still there. He's the backup. He signed a, a new contract. Right. And they're gonna push Lance. Yeah. I say Lance gets hurt and Garoppolo gets back into the saddle. And I think they, I think, I don't know if they win that division in NFC West. I think they may sneak in with a wild card. Mm-hmm. I think they go on a, another historic playoff run. And I got the Bills beating them in the Super Bowl. I think the Bills have too much momentum. I think the only thing that stops the Bills is injuries. I love the Bills, man. I just think. Lamar's, I think, at that point where he's playing for a contract. You are. You are. I, I, think, I, I think he also plays with that chip on his shoulder. Like, y'all wanted me to be a receiver when I came to this yeah. league. And, and, and I came what? out here and did what I did. Then I went right. MVP. And you don't right. want to pay me. And you got this dude, right. Watson, who who's never even been a, a league MVP or, or done what and, I've done. And let me yeah. tell you something. I understand exactly what you said. And you could be on to something because I do think he's going to come back with a chip on his show. Yeah, he's going to like um, pay me pay me 270 pay me yeah. $300 Because if he wins the Super Bowl, he knows if I win the Super Bowl, win MVP, I'm getting a $300 million contract. I'm going to be the first quarterback to get $300 million. Yeah, I mean, you're not far-fetched on 260 it. $260 guaranteed. You're not far-fetched <laughs> on it. I just think I just think Buffalo has all the right pieces. I think it's the right time. I think it's the right coach. I think it's the right quarterback. I think the defense is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I love the Diggs kid at receiver. I just think everything fits with Buffalo. But I definitely tell you this. I think both Baltimore is right there. I think Baltimore maybe need one more year, but I could definitely see Baltimore doing it. But we mm-hmm. both agreed that the champion is going to come out of the AFC this year, right? Yeah, I believe that. I believe I that believe too. I believe that. I just, I just going with the Saints because I do believe that they're the most well-rounded team besides the Rams. Yeah, you might be. I think both sides of the ball, they could run the ball with Kamara, they could pass the ball with Michael Thomas and Olave. Yeah. And they even have Tatum playing uh, that that white quarterback that plays tight end, running back, whatever yeah. that utility Swiss Army knife. Yeah. I think he's there, and I think Jameis Winston is probably better. I would say he's in the top half of the league. Well, I think it comes down to you bring up some excellent points. I think it comes down to Jameis. We mm-hmm. don't know what Jameis is. We know that he can score a lot of touchdowns, but we also know he turns the ball over. But we also know that. He may not have been given a fair chance or a long enough chance in Tampa Bay. I agree. So we'll see. You know, he got hurt last year. But man, I think that's good, man. I think that's enough for our NFL predictions episode. Um, it's been real as usual for Mo City to New York. You see it. We'll catch up next week. I think next week we're gonna talk a lot about next week is a fight week with the Canelo Triple Z. Triple G trilogy coming up. I think we'll get into boxing. We didn't get a chance to talk about the heavyweight division, but we'll do that next week because next week is a fight week, big pay-per-view. We'll give our predictions on that. We'll talk a little bit of heavyweight boxing. Um, once again, man, it's been real cold from Mo City to New York. We'll catch up next week. Thank you all for tuning in to Debate with Bake podcast. Stream this on Spotify, Apple, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow Mo Serious Entertainment on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to Mo Mo Serious Entertainment. With that being said, catch you next week on Debate with Bake podcast. And we out. We out. Peace, my dude.